Welcome back to Simplo School. My name is Dave and today we will talk about backup schemes. We will take a closer look into full backups, incremental backups, and differential backups. Let's get started. Jumping right into things. What is the purpose of a backup? A backup creates and stores copies of data that can protect an organization against data loss. Data loss can occur from human failure, hardware failure, natural disasters, and more. It's more common than you think. On the CISA exam, what are the three main types of backups? Full backup, differential backup, and incremental backup. Each scheme has its advantages and disadvantages. These schemes are typically combined to complement each other in business environments. With that being said, we are going to take a deeper dive into the different types of backup schemes and discuss definitions, advantages, and disadvantages of each. To start, a full backup is a complete or full copy of an organization's data, regardless of any previous backups. The blue tile represents the data subject to backup. To start, there's an initial full backup in the business environment. The first backup of this data is a full backup, meaning that all of the data, regardless of any previous backups, is subject to the backup. The same thing can be said for the second backup, and the third, and the fourth, and so on and so forth. Looking at this holistically, you can see that regardless of any previous backups, there is a complete and full copy of the organization's data. All of the data is subject to backup. Moving on to differential backup. Differential backup is a copy of any additions or modifications since the most recent full backup. We will emphasize full backup here and you will see why later. The blue tile represents data subject to backup. The initial full backup is performed. The first backup has no data that is subject to copying. This is because there has not been any additions or modifications since the initial full backup. The second backup has a piece that is subject to backup. This piece represents an addition or modification since the last full backup. The third backup has two pieces of data that are subject to backup. This is because they are additions or modifications since the most recent full backup. And lastly, the fourth backup has three pieces of data subject to backup. This is because, again, the three pieces represent additions or modifications since the most recent full backup. When looking at a differential backup, use the most recent full backup and compare it to the backup that is at hand. Any difference between the most recent full backup and the backup at hand is subject to backup. And lastly, incremental backup. An incremental backup is a copy of any additions or modifications since the most recent backup of any kind. The blue tile represents data subject to backup. We start with our initial full backup. The first backup does not have any pieces of data which are subject to backup. This is because there were no additions or modifications since the most recent backup, which was the initial full backup. The second backup has one data piece, which is subject to backup. This is because there was one addition or modification since the most recent backup, which was the first backup. The third backup has one piece of data, which is subject to backup. This is because there was one addition or modification since the most recent backup, which was the second backup. And lastly, the fourth backup has one piece of data, which is subject to backup. This was because there was one addition or modification since the most recent backup, which was the third backup. When looking at an incremental backup, use the most recent backup of any kind and compare it to the backup at hand. Any differences between the two are subject to the backup. Now we're going to compare the different areas amongst full differential and incremental backups. To start, duplication. Full backups store a lot of duplicate files. A differential backup stores some duplicate files, and an incremental backup stores no duplicate files. Think back to the graphic we just looked at. 
For storage capacity requirement, full backup has the highest capacity requirement. There are a lot of duplicate files that are being copied. Differential backup has a medium capacity requirement, and an incremental backup has the lowest storage capacity requirement. Backup speed. Full backup has the slowest backup speed. A differential backup has a medium backup speed, and an incremental backup has the fastest backup speed. And lastly, restoration speed. A full backup has the fastest restoration speed. A differential backup has a medium restoration speed, and an incremental backup has the slowest restoration speed. The advantage of a full backup scheme is that it has the fastest restoration speed. However, that comes at the trade-off of having the highest storage capacity requirement and the slowest backup speed. On the other hand, the advantage of an incremental backup scheme is that it has the lowest storage capacity requirement and the fastest backup speed. However, its main disadvantage is that it has the slowest restoration speed. A differential backup has its advantages and disadvantages relative to a full backup scheme and incremental backup scheme. It's all about the business and determining which scheme makes sense for its operations. Now that we have a solid understanding of the different types of backup schemes, let's jump into some questions. Question number one, what type of backup scheme copies data since the most recent full backup? If you select the D, you are correct, differential backup. Again, a full backup copies all data, regardless of the most recent backup. An incremental backup copies data since the last backup, regardless of what that backup was. And an intermediary backup is not a backup scheme. Think about this graphic again. You could see here that the differential backup copies the difference in data since the last full backup. Question number two, what type of backup scheme copies data since the most recent full backup or incremental backup? If you select the B, you are correct. Again, a full backup copies all data. An intermediary backup is not a backup scheme and a differential backup copies data since the last full backup. Think again through the graphic. An incremental backup copies the difference in data since the last backup of any kind. Question number three, which of the following backup schemes requires the largest storage capacity? Think about which scheme has the highest storage capacity requirement. If you selected full backup, you are correct. An incremental backup requires the lowest storage capacity. An intermediary backup is not a backup scheme and a differential backup requires medium storage capacity relevant to a full backup. Question number four, which of the following backup schemes does not store any duplicate data? If you select the B, you are correct. A full backup stores all duplicate data, an intermediary backup is not a backup scheme, and a differential backup stores duplicate data from the most recent full backup. And last question, number five, which of the following backup schemes has the lowest restoration speed? If you selected D, you are correct. A differential backup has a medium restoration speed relevant to an incremental backup. A full backup has the fastest restoration speed, and an intermediary backup is not a backup scheme.